In last videos we discussed tabular and graphical presentations that actually used to summarize our data set. But sometimes we prefer numeric measures to describe our data, where our ultimate goal is to get more precise information. It's just like we have to express large amount of data with a single numerical value. For this purpose, in today's video we will learn measure of location and measure of dispersion for both grouped and ungrouped data set. By grouped data, we mean that the data presented in frequency distribution table and ungrouped data is actually the raw form of dataset. There is not only the one measure of location and measure of dispersion, in fact they are many. But in this video, our focus on those measures which we use mostly in the practical life. The other measures will be covered in the next video. And yes, before moving further, if you have not subscribed my channel yet, subscribe Toolkits and press the bell icon to follow me on YouTube. We begin with measure of location. It is also called average and it is the only value that expresses the whole dataset. Basically, it is such a value where dataset tends to concentrate. It is just like a player's batting average that is a single value but tells overall story about how well a player plays. Similarly, a student's CGPA shows how well a student is in studies. It is because CGPA is also an average. Now we will learn how to calculate the average value. Arithmetic mean or simply mean is the most frequently used and reported measure of location. It is obtained by dividing the sum of all values by the number of values in the dataset. Instead of writing in words, it is more convenient to express it symbolically. The mean is denoted by x bar and for indication of summation we use Greek letter sigma. We can also read it as summation sign. x actually the given values and n is total numbers in our dataset. The given expression is read as x bar equals to summation x over n and it is the formula for ungrouped dataset. For grouped data, due to the involvement of frequency table we use this formula and we can read it as x bar equals to summation fx over summation f. To calculate the average value, now we can use some of the practical examples. In first example, the married couples were asked how long they have been married. Their responses were rounded up to years. For this purpose, a large dataset have been collected from a famous city and to extent of understanding, I am limiting it to only 20 responses. As it is an ungrouped data, the average is calculated by this formula. So we first require the sum of all values in our dataset. And as given dataset has 20 observations, by putting all the values in the formula, we get the average 23. It tells us the average time is more than two decades ever since they got married. Now we move to grouped data analysis, where our teacher wants to check the average time his 50 students spend to complete a test. As it is a group data, here we use this formula and we need to calculate two sums. First we calculate the lower sum and for next sum we calculate the mid values obtained by adding the lower and upper limits of a class. And as because we add two values, so we divide it by two. The same process is done till the final class. These mid values are actual values of a variable. We don't require to sum this column, but we need the sum of the product of frequency and mid values of each class. By putting the required values in the formula, we found that on average students took about one hour to complete their examination. If classes are not given and only the mid values are there, then it becomes more simpler as we don't need to make an extra column for mid values. Music 
secondly we focus on measure of dispersion measure of location does not reveal the whole picture of our data set as it tells us only the concentration of the data but does not describe anything about the variation of observations in data set two data sets with the same average may have completely different variations so along with measure of location we also prefer measure of dispersion for adequate description of the data set the standard deviation is most commonly used measure of dispersion it is because it provides variation in the same unit as the unit of the original data set for example if the unit of data is in kilogram standard deviation provides the amount of variation in kilogram but variance provides the amount of variation in the square of the unit that is kilogram square and it is not an easy way to interpret our findings that's why in real life we prefer standard deviation to measure the amount of variation from average for sample data variance is denoted by s square and standard deviation by s to deal with ungrouped data the formula can be read as variance equals to sum of square of deviation of each observation from mean divided by n and standard deviation equals to positive square root of sum of square of deviation of each observation from mean divided by n and for grouped data we include the frequencies so far we have come to understand that if the standard deviation is to be calculated the first we have to calculate variance then its positive square root will be equal to standard deviation to compute variance we first find the mean then calculate the difference between each observation from mean and after it square the differences thirdly we sum all the square differences and finally divide it by number of observations in data set for standard deviation we simply take the positive square root of final result of variance we again use the first example about married couples but instead of calculating the average now we find the variation in their responses and because of limited space i reduced the observations to only five responses it is an ungrouped data to calculate the variation we first find the average that is 15 now we make another column to find the difference between each observation and their mean one of the hints here if you add this column and result is 0 then your calculation are on right way that is because it is a property of mean otherwise you need to recalculate your findings keep it in mind only ungrouped data hold this property it is not for grouped data set the required sums are calculated and put their values in formula the result tells us the variation in responses from mean in term of square of the unit is more than 121 years but it does not make any sense now for better interpretation we use standard deviation just take it positive square root we can say that the variation in responses from average is about 11 years and for grouped data We again use the example number 2 where now our teacher will check the variation in completing a paper of his 50 students. In solution section we again find the average first according to the formula we don't need values in classes so we make another column named mid values. If classes are not given only the mid values are there then obviously we don't need to make another column. Secondly we required the sum of product of frequency and square of deviation of observation from mean For this purpose we will make another column x minus x bar and then we will make another column where frequency and square of this column will be multiplied After that we will add all the required sums and put them in the formula The result is in square of the unit take its positive square root to get standard deviation our results are telling us that the variation that is coming in the paper submission is about 7 minutes from average now we move to exercise section here in first question business insider has shared the advertisement amount of top 12 companies calculate the average and variation in amount 
In second question, the opening of different blockbuster movies has been given in million dollars. You need to find the average and variation. Smartphones are advanced mobile phones with internet, photos, music and videos capability. The third question is about the ownership of smartphones of different age groups. Again we need to calculate the average and variation in dataset. Hope you learnt a lot and that's enough for today. Don't forget to subscribe my channel Toolkits to get such informative videos regularly. Stay tuned. Oh, <laughs>